Hey everyone, it's Sean from Crafted Elements. In this short video, I want to talk about our blank or drill it yourself uh, router sled base plate. So our router sleds have been a very, very popular item and we do have a variety of base plates. We've got one for like Festool specific routers. We've got our U1 at the moment, which is universal base plate. It's got a bunch of different holes in it. It'll fit like 25 different router configurations. But there's that odd customer who has like some crazy old router. Maybe their dad gave it to them or maybe it's a team U router or 10 U, whatever. It's an imported router that is, you know, obscure or whatever. Maybe it's another popular style of router that just doesn't fit the U1 base plate. So uh, in this case, then the blank drill it yourself base plate is a good option for you. And to be honest, it's probably better uh, than getting the U1 base plate and drilling it because if you have the blank base plate and you're gonna be using that router specifically, you're gonna have way less holes um, in that router base plate to catch sawdust and stuff like that, right? So one of our blank router base plates looks like this. Sometimes it comes with the paper on it, you just peel it off, but that's it, okay? So you've got, your router's gonna be going here. This is a six inch diameter circle that's etched in here. I think this is an inch and three quarters in here, and then you've got a center marking that'll easy allow you, easily allow you to position your router. The one thing you wanna note is the positions of the uh, boxes here, um, these four uh, holes on each side, that's where your bearings are gonna go. So when you position this, you really wanna avoid having these handles over those bearings because you're going to run into a problem once you install the bearings or you can take the handles off your router altogether and it's not a problem whatsoever. This is just a run-of-the-mill Mastercraft router. I'm up here in Canada A um, and Mastercraft is like a Canadian tire brand. Canadian Tire is like a tool lumber general store. I don't know what do you want to call it. It's a pretty big store for tools and just general housewares and stuff so that's where this router came in. From it very may, it very well may be compatible with our U1 base plate, but for the sake of this demonstration, it is not. Um, so what we're going to do first is get our router, put it on something where it's flat, and mark out to make sure that's going to work. Make sure the holes are actually going to get aligned. There's not really going to be an issue here. Uh, to get center is really just best guess. Yes, you can get your calipers out or your measuring tape or whatever, but realistically, the purpose of this thing is to put a really chunky router bit on it and just go to town on wood. So if it's off by like a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch from center, it's still gonna work. It's not gonna make a difference. That router uh, cutter bit is gonna be, you know, kind of here anyway. So whether it's like this or like this, doesn't make a difference. But we do have, again, that edge circle and those crosshairs to help you find center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loosen up my router. I've got a quarter inch flush trim bit in here right now. It's probably easier to put some sort of eighth inch or quarter inch bit in there because that's gonna help you find center a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, loosen this up to the point where I can retract the router bit uh, so it's not protruding past the, past the surface of our acrylic base. And that way I can flip this whole thing over and, uh, and not have to worry about it toppling over, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna lock that in place. And then I'm gonna put the Crafted Elements logo face side up so I can see it, not reversed, not mirrored. So not like this, not like this. I'm gonna put our router down. It'd probably help if we retighten that nut at least just to get centered here. <laughs> All right, so we know it's gonna fit. Next thing you wanna do, get some uh, masking tape, painter's tape, whatever. And this serves two purposes. One, it makes uh, drilling into the acrylic easier so you don't get your bit walking away from you when you do drill, but also makes it easier to uh, mark your, uh, your drill holes. All right, so I can still see the outline of that six inch etching and I've got the center. That's pretty darn close to center. So the next thing I'm gonna do is you can grab a pen, depending on the thickness of the router, you may wanna just take your pen apart and get the internal part of that pen, it's kind of a trick, and then just go like this. Mark all your holes. Take it off, put your router aside. We've got our four holes. So next thing you want to do is start drilling your holes. It doesn't matter from which side, but um, I'm just going to put this here because I've got this uh, top I don't want to have to drill through. 
Start with a uh, smaller diameter uh, drill bit. If you start with a large drill bit, not only is it more effort, but you have the possibility of cracking uh, the acrylic. So if you start with a drill bit this size, and then just work up, it's a much easier process. Move up to a um, larger diameter bit now. So what bit size diameter do you go to? Well, that depends on your router screws. So a lot of times you can get the screws from the router itself, uh, depending on if it had a plate on it or not, or maybe it's part of a router table to have longer screws. If you've got really, really short screws, you're gonna have to get new screws anyway um, that are gonna be long enough to go through the space plate. There is a trick if you kind of are in a pinch, if you have screws that are a little bit too short to go through the router plate, you can actually countersink these holes, which is what we're gonna do in a minute. But the depth or the diameter of the screw or the diameter of the hole you're making is really just dependent on whatever screws you're using to attach your router to this thing. Before you get too excited and get your countersink bit out, remember that your screws are actually going from the underside. So you do not want to countersink the top side, you want to countersink the bottom side, if you need to countersink them at all. Do you have to countersink them? No. If your screws are long enough, it doesn't matter if they protrude past this surface, if they're going to be raised by a little bit, because keep in mind, the router bearing screws also protrude past the surface. So you're not really losing any capability by having those screws protrude past. I would pretty much only countersink them if they weren't long enough to get through your material and the router. But I'm gonna go ahead anyway and show you what that looks like. Um, so I've got the back side now, so you can see the Craft Elements logo is mirrored or, or inverted. I'm gonna get a countersink. This isn't a great countersink bit, probably should be replaced, but it will show you the basics of it. One piece of advice is to just do the minimal at first. You can always go deeper, but you can't put back material, right? So once I blow that out, you can see those screws are nice and countersunk and they protrude enough to be able to grab the router. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my router back, line up my holes, get the screws. All right, that's it. Easy peasy, right? So uh, to recap, all you really need is your drill, your router. You're gonna need some small diameter drill bits up to a larger diameter uh, drill bit that's gonna be just a little bit bigger than whatever screws you're using to mount your router to this thing. If you uh, are using screws that are too, just a little bit too short, you can countersink uh, from the bottom to get you that extra depth. But of course, there's only so much you can do. You definitely want to have at least a quarter inch of screw thread into your router because if you don't have that much, your router is going to break off the plate or it's just going to you know, eventually loosen and shake around, which is a bad thing. You want to have that router secured onto your base plate. Um, and of course, some tape, some sort of a marking device into your pen works wonders. But that's it. So if you've got an obscure router, one that's not listed, maybe you've got an old school router you don't want to get rid of, um, that is going to work with our router sleds. You can do it with this blank drill yourself plate and it really only took a few minutes um, to do. If you want to learn more about our line of router sleds for makers and woodworkers like yourself, head over to craftedelements.com. They're definitely awesome for leveling live edge slabs, small tables, uh, and things like that without the use of a CNC machine or an industrial planer that you would have to sell your kidney in order to be able to afford. So again, guys, craftedelements.com. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. Have you have any questions, make sure you enter them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and happy making.